Hi, welcome to another episode of Teen Pride Book Talk. This is the program on AADL TV where I take a few minutes each time to tell you about a young adult book that is both inclusive of and representative of folks in the LGBTQIA plus community. My name is Lucy and the book that I would like to share with you today is this book, All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. This is a work of nonfiction. It's, he calls it a memoir manifesto. And it is a series of personal essays by George M. Johnson, who is a writer, and an LGBTQIA plus activist. In this memoir slash manifesto, he talks about growing up black and queer in America. And he explores this intersectionality by examining masculinity, by examining gender, family, friendship, brotherhood, and other facets of his childhood. He gets specifically into some very important but heavy topics like gender policing, there's some sexual abuse, institutional violence, but he also talks a lot about hope and joy and happiness. And the book begins with memories in his early childhood and it goes all the way through his college experience. And it's broken up into acts, like a play he calls the acts. Act one is a different kid. Act two is family, act three is teenagers, and act four is friends. George Johnson puts so much of himself into these essays. He does not spare details. There's a lot of difficult things to read, but as I said before, there is a lot of joy and a lot of love. So I just wanna to read to you from his intro because I don't think that I can say it better than him why he set out to write this book. He starts by saying, in writing this book, I wanted to be as authentic and truthful about my experience as possible. I wanted my story to be told in totality, the good, the bad, and the things I was always too afraid to talk about publicly. This meant going to places and discussing some subjects that are often kept away from teens for fear of them being too heavy. But the truth of the matter is, these things happened to me when I was a child, a teenager, and young adult. So as heavy as these subjects may be, it is necessary that they are not only told, but also read by teens who may have to navigate many of these same experiences in their own lives. This book will touch on sexual assault, including molestation, loss of virginity, homophobia, racism, and anti-blackness. These discussions at times may be a bit graphic, but nonetheless, they are experiences that many reading this book will encounter or have already encountered. And I want those readers to be seen and heard in these pages. So right from the beginning, he tells you what to expect, but he also highlights the importance of why all those details are in this book. He said in an interview on NPR that he didn't have stories like this growing up and he didn't know many now. And so he wanted to do his part to make sure that the next generation of black queer children had something that they could relate to and connect with. Then he says, there are days I look at TV and film and still don't see myself represented. So my ultimate goal was providing the story I didn't have, but always needed and to be the vessel so that so many can feel seen and heard. And that is the reason why I chose this book to talk about on this series. I think that it exemplifies representation. Uh, George, Johnson goes deeply into agency in this book. He starts talking about agency early on with an anecdote about his name. He had always been called Matthew when he was little, but at age eight, he learned that his actual first name was George and Matthew was his middle name. His parents had reasons why they didn't wanna call their baby George, but once he found out that that was his real first name, they let him choose which name he wanted to go by. And he feels that they gave him a real gift by providing him with that type of agency at an early age. He also wonders in that same segment if his parents would have let him choose any name despite gender connotations, if it had been a typically female name. Um, so he, he takes every little anecdote and he puts it in the place of gender and race 
and sexuality and these important topics that just run throughout this book. He wishes that parents in general spoke of agency earlier and more. And then he makes this really interesting point that a lot of times not giving children agency is about children not conforming to heterosexual norms. In the later section of the book, he talks about coming out and how for him and many other people, that is always something that is happening. He did not come out until college. And he talks about waiting for the right moment to do so. But you see throughout the stories from his childhood to his college years, the moment he approaches coming out to someone, the moment someone wants to out him and he says, no, he's not gay. And through the stories and his words, you realize the journey that it took for him and many other people to come out. He says, we see coming out stories all the time, some for the better, many for the worse. What we don't get to see is what led up to that moment. How many times a person tried to push past that barrier to get to that point. And I think that that's so vital in these stories is that he is giving us the before. He is giving us all of those moments that led up to the moment where he actually came out. And he also adds that coming out is not a final thing. It's something that is ever occurring. You are always having to come out somewhere. Every new job, every new city you live in, every new person you meet, you are likely having to explain your identity. And those are just a few of his own words in this book, but I wanted to share them with you just to show what a good writer he is and also to show the range of topics that he addresses so powerfully and so honestly and so personally in this book. The title I learned, uh, All Boys Aren't Blue, actually refers to four things. The obvious one would be gender, that blue is typically associated with boys and male gender. and then the second one is his father is a cop. So he is referring to a blue household, a household with a cop. And he feels that having a cop as a father really shaped the way that he was raised. The third blue is a reference to a character in the book Queen Sugar. And the character's name is Blue. And it's a boy who in the beginning plays with dolls and so is defying gender roles right from early childhood. And the fourth thing is in a reference to the movie Moonlight, which he says changed the way that he thinks about so many things and the beauty of black boys looking blue in Moonlight. If you enjoy nonfiction and you enjoy personal essays, this book would be a natural for you to pick up. But I also urge people who have not read a lot of nonfiction or essays to pick it up. Johnson is so forthright and bravely shares so many of his memories growing up black and queer and what he struggles with and what he loves. So this is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson.